story time. A few years ago, I was doing my thing, cleaning a patient's teeth, just scaling some tartar like usual, and I happened to have a small piece of gum in my mouth tucked into my cheek near the back right side molars. I hadn't really actively chewed this piece of gum for a few minutes because I was also giving patient education and I was working. And that was mixed with moments of just pure concentration. Well, suddenly things got weird. Out of nowhere, the gum starts to dissolve very rapidly. The texture got grainy at first and then it literally turned into liquid. So on this episode of Burst TV, I'm gonna explain why this gum disappearing trick may have happened. I'm Charlotte and you're watching Burst TV. So yeah, I told the patient about this and his theory was maybe the gum was expired well, my nerd alert went off because I knew the gum wasn't old, and I remember this happening to me when I was younger, like in junior high, a long, long, long time ago. I remember running the mile for a fitness test, and again, I had tucked the gum in my cheek so I wouldn't choke on it. I didn't have a lot of gum, so I didn't want to spit it out. I didn't want to waste it. And during that run, the gum just melted. It was so weird. So the work family decided it must have something to do with enzymes in the spit, although we couldn't really figure it out. And then I came home and I asked some actual family members. Surely my mom or a blood relative had had this experience sometime in their life. Again, no. They described the gum as getting tough and thought that maybe um, the gum just sat in my mouth for too long. But usually they would chew it until it got tough and then they spit it out. Never really were in the habit of putting in their cheek. So then I reached out to Dr. Google, of course, and the first thing that came up in a search was that during moments of excitement or stress or even being highly attracted to someone during physical activities, <laughs> that a flood of extra saliva and enzymes comes into contact with the gum and destroys it. Well, I was definitely not overly excited or nervous on this particular tooth cleaning situation, um, so it, it just still didn't make sense to me. Well, years went by, and again, uh, just more recently, I happened to think about this, decided to hop back on the internet and see if there were any new revelations or similar stories to read about. Well, here's a blurb from Polymer Solutions Incorporated from back in 2017. The rubber gum bases, natural latex or synthetic rubbers, are not soluble in water. Synthetic rubbers used in gum bases are polyethylene and polyvinyl acetate. Now, they're meant to be long-lasting in saliva. Some formulations are not even digestible if swallowed, um, and they can re-emerge in a solid piece. <laughs> but they don't stay in your stomach forever. That's a wives' tale. And there are enzymes such as amylase that can break down gum, but there is in fact a medical term called gum disintegration syndrome, and it's given to people with saliva that's incompatible with chewing gum for one reason or another. And I've been on uh, celiac disease support groups and, and it, it, various places on Reddit and I still can't find much. Just seems like it's random episodes that no one can really find a solid answer. I did come across this explanation though. Given time, normal saliva at body temperature is able to break down chewing gum. The oral cavity, however, is rarely a body temperature because it's always being cooled by the passage of air from the lungs and nostrils. That's why you put a thermometer under your tongue and keep it closed when they're checking for a fever. So that makes sense. Anyway, the molecules in the chewing gum have an affinity for attaching to themselves. And since chewing is what you're normally doing when you have gum in your mouth, the attack of saliva is halted and the enzymes uh, aren't able to work as well. So what they're saying is essentially that when you stop chewing and let the spit sit there on the gum for a while, kind of soak into it, the enzymes actually start to digest the gum like they're meant to. And if I think about it, I did have the gum right next to a major salivary gland both of the times that I can remember. Honestly, if I think about the dozens of times in my life that I've had a piece of gum hidden in my cheek while in class or talking to someone or singing a song in the car, um, I can't say that it's happened often enough for that theory to be true. So I'm thinking it must be a combination of several hypotheses, perhaps a specific type of gum, a bad batch with less adhesive properties, and maybe an overactive enzyme at that time. Just not 100% sure. <laughs> So we need your help. Let's get this conversation going. Let me know if it's happened to you. Maybe we can work this out together. If you have a good science background and know a lot about digestion, enzymes, and bodily functions, we would love to hear from you. Maybe we can do a part two with some funny stories. Now, if you wanna read more accounts about this mysterious gum dissolving phenomenon, I'll make sure to leave some references for you as well in the description of this video. 
Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.